Congressman, uh, let's start with what happened in El Paso. 200 migrants there arrested for breaching the border. Nat National Guard soldiers were hurt in that incident. Governor Abbott says he wants to arrest every single person involved in that. But but these are people fleeing sometimes terrible circumstances. I'm curious whether you think that that this breach, this violent breach, is a reflection of of Texas's border policies not working. Uh, Jason, thank you for having me uh, back on. And, and this is where we're at in my district. This is year four of this border crisis, and people are exhausted, and they're willing to try things that they weren't willing to try two years ago. And there have to be repercussions for people's actions. And, and we're also seeing different people come over in year four than what was happening in year one. Much more aggressive, much more desperate, and uh, and, and something has to stop. Nobody wants to see this happen. So when they bum rush a National Guardsman or Border Patrol or anyone, there has to be repercussion. The word has to be out that that will not be allowed in Texas. So I welcome the governor's response. But as you know, these people face potentially death in their own country. I mean, isn't an arrest what they want? Well, part of the, the difficulty is they're fleeing very dis desperate situations, but not all of them. Let's just say for Venezuela, a lot of times in El Paso, it's Venezuelans that you're dealing with. They're not always coming from Venezuela. They, a lot of times they've already fled Venezuela years ago, and they're living in other parts of Central and South America, and they're coming to, the, to our border, and they're dumping that documentation where they were residents of Peru and, and, and Nicaragua and other places. So it's all misleading, but it boils down to this. It's chaotic. It's chaotic. It's violent. The people that live along the border do not feel safe, and we just want our lives back. And if that means arresting everybody that breaks the law, then that means arresting everybody that breaks the law. Congressman, let's talk about SB4. You told me before that the Senate Bill 4, the state law, is a situation that pains you, I believe you told me. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, the three-judge panel down there, has a lot of questions about it and is keeping the state law on hold. Why do you think this famously conservative court is so skeptical about how Texas wants to handle the border? I think we're going round and round on, on the courts. And I just were I was I was just on the border uh, and I'll be there uh, uh, again uh, later, later this week before I head back to Washington. And, and what I've seen is nothing has changed. It's continued to get worse at all different parts. We always talk about El Paso. We always talk about Eagle Pass. But there's other parts of West Texas where it's it's just chaotic and something just has to give. I get it. The courts are trying to get it right. But in the meantime, it would be, this would all go away if the Biden administration would simply enforce the laws that are on the books by deporting people that are here illegally and encouraging legal immigration. There's no discussion on legal immigration. Right. There's no discussion on deportations. It's only the states versus the federal government. And I think that's a lose-lose situation all the way around. And Republicans and Democrats, as you know, for, for years have kicked you know, down the road the whole immigration situation. How do you think SB4, though, ends in the courts? Will this survive? I'm not too sure how SB4 ends. I do know I'm in a district where we're at the front lines of this, and we just want change. We just want some sense of law and order back in place. It's not fair that local law enforcement and sheriffs have to, to fill that gap, but no one is filling the gap, Jason. So we're in this 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 stuck spot where what do you do? Uh, the federal government isn't going to come help. We, that's very evident. Uh, and, and the and these states are, are in these municipalities. They're overwhelmed as well. But we just need something to happen. The sooner SB four can get uh, through the finish line and enacted, I think the sooner Texans can be safe. When Congress when Congress returns on Tuesday, do you expect that the House of Representatives is finally going to give? Ukraine, the money and supplies it needs to fight off Russia? I'm not certain. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about what we're going, what Congress is going to do when we get back in session in regards to Ukraine. My position has been you cannot leave an ally on the battlefield to bleed out. There has to be a solution. But also, blank checks don't work either. Uh, I've heard from more and more Americans where they feel as if they're, they are last in this equation. What about our border? What about our streets? What about our roads? I think there's a way to so settle both of these. And, and part of this has been this Lend-Lease idea, is instead of giving away uh, our, our tr national treasure, what if we lend them with the idea of getting some of that return? Or, or and or, is, what, if, what if we tax the Russians, who are the ones that started this? We've lost track of who started this war. 
What if we tax the Russians and, and seize some of those assets in order to pay the bill? But I will say this, Jason, Americans have had enough of us paying the, everybody's tab. You know, we've got our own tabs to pay. So maybe the Lend-Lease idea and, and using the Russians to pay part of it, it, it could be something that gets enough traction to go somewhere in Congress. Is that something House Republicans would support, you think? There's been, you know, there's been grumblings of it. You know, more and more people going, look, blank check isn't the option, but what is an option? And those are two things that have been that have been talked about. Even President Trump have, has has talked about the possibility of the lend lease of getting of getting the Ukrainians to pay back, uh, you know, uh, some of the the funds that are that are issued uh, on the front end of this. I do think there's a solution here. It's not going to be easy. But once again, leaving our allies to bleed out on the battlefield, yeah. whether it's Ukraine, whether it's Israel, it doesn't matter who it is, is always a terrible idea because our adversaries will fill that gap. Last question for you here, Congressman. Does Speaker Johnson survive the vote on Ukraine, on Israel and Taiwan, if all these come together at once? You know, I'm, I'm not concerned about uh, the vacate the chair, uh, maybe while, while others are. Speaker Johnson has been very firm in his conservative values. He's also uh, has, has done his best to govern you know, with a very slim majority. Marjorie Taylor Greene is, is a friend of mine, and, and she, you know, she she dropped this uh, motion to vacate. But it, but it was this is different than what we saw with Kevin McCarthy and others that had a specific date and there was a specific vote that was going to take place. This was more of a I took it as a shot over the brow. And, and you know, they're trying to keep uh, 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 Speaker Johnson in line, if you will. But at the end of the day, we have to be able to govern. I, I think this all gets shaken out. We saw the chaos that, that occurred when we changed speakers. And and now is not the time to uh, to go down that route again. Now's the time to how do we have these tough conversations and find real tangible solutions that will keep Americans safe here at home and also keep Americans safe abroad. Congressman, thank you. Thanks, Jason.